Welcome back to the channel, everyone. What did we just watch? Everything I just saw from the Houston Texans lets me know I'm in the thick of playoff football. Guys, I'm going to be 100% honest. I'm extremely excited. We're seeing the best of NFL football, and you're seeing the best of 24-hour sports. I want to go ahead and jump into this one because I have so many takeaways, and there's so many things we have to talk about talking about this game. The Houston Texans win in dominating fashion, picking up a 45-14 to win over the Cleveland Browns. C.J. Stroud becomes the youngest NFL quarterback to win a playoff game. Shout out, shout out, shout out, C.J strive for what he was able to do surpasses another number seven in that category Michael Vick was previously the youngest NFL quarterback to win a playoff game CJ Stroud he trumps it big big time game from him on the day 16 of 21 274 yards and three touchdowns Nico Collins six receptions 96 yards going to the flip side Joe Flacco 34 46 307 yards one touchdown two interceptions and took four sacks also should I add those two interceptions they were both two pick sixes by Steven Nelson one by Christian Harris on the ground for Cleveland on a day they had 20 carries for 56 rushing yards even when the game was close I know this was a game where the Houston Texans jumped out to a big time lead in the second half but even in the first half we saw a Houston Texans team that almost got ran out of the playoffs last week by Jonathan Taylor in this game they clamped down D'Amico Ryan. he understood what the challenge was he understood how Cleveland was going to try to attack their defense and they did the best they could against the run on today so shout out them for that but David Njoku seven receptions 93 yards also Harrison Bryant he chipped in with some big time catches we saw a Cleveland Browns offense that really went blow for blow in this one I think early on in the first half before the two pick sixes Kevin Stefanski Bobby Slowick D'Amico Ryans, Jim Schwartz. Those are four names and four key guys who we saw going at it in a true chess match. I mean, you look at the game early, I'm paying attention to how the Houston Texans were able to put so much pressure on the Cleveland Browns offensive line. Now, I think for the Cleveland Browns, also a side note, we're seeing a team where injuries finally started to creep back up. They finally started to catch up with this football team. Jack Conklin, Dewan Jones, Jedrick Willis. That's three starting caliber tackles that the Cleveland Browns do not have. And we saw the Houston Texans take every advantage of that because they have some very good pass rushers. You look at Jonathan Gennard, he had 12 and a half sacks on the season. You look at Will Anderson, he was leading in rookie pressures off of the edge. So we're looking at all of these different things. Even Derek Barnett having a siding off of the edge, getting consistent pressure. Christian Harris is blitzing up the gaps. We're seeing Blake Cashman flying all around the football field. Then, of course, you have Sheldon Rankin, some of those guys on the inside. So a big, big time day getting pressure. And then I think we flip that on his head a little bit. We look at what the Cleveland Browns tried to do. Now, Greg Newsom, I'm extremely high on Greg Newsom, but Bobby Slowick, this is why we pay attention to offensive coordinators. This is why we give these guys such high props and high praise, because I just want to talk about one play. Now, it was third and long in the first drive for the Houston Texans, and C.J. Stroud almost threw an interception. I believe this was before or after they kicked the field goal to go up 3-0. But C.J. Stroud almost threw an interception against man coverage. The safety came down. He tried to force the ball in there, and it was going to be a pick, but he dropped it. So we flip that. We go down to the next drive. It's third and long again. What do we do? Nico Collins lined up in the slot. Guess who's on him? Greg Newsom. We're going to motion Nico Collins outside. Now he becomes the number one. We translate. Now our number one becomes our number two. And now you got Greg Newsom, a slot corner, a true slot corner, because they have Emerson and Denzel Ward. Those are their perimeter guys. So you do that. Now we're looking at a situation where Nico Collins, their best receiver, probably one of the best receivers in the NFL at this point. And now we got him on a guy who's not used to being in this spot on the outside, outside of numbers. Big, big time completion down the football field. CJ Stroud throws it on the money. And those are the little types of things that I'm paying attention to. You look at a couple of drives down the road, David Njoku for the Cleveland Browns, he has a big time route up the seam. They go down the football field. Amari Cooper has a catch. Kareem Hunt actually runs it in. He has two carries and gets in the end zone. And then I'm coming back to it. I'm looking at how Every time the Cleveland Browns try to take the momentum, they try to take the advantage, Bobby Slowick came back. This is where Devin Singletary had a big time run. Then you have the screenplay to Nico Collins. Those are the types of things you have to pay attention to. How good was Laramie Tunsil on Miles Garrett in this game? Every time we saw those two guys, every time we saw those two guys matched up, Laramie Tunsil held his own. 
And that's the biggest thing you have to do because they have Zadarius, they have Dalvin Thomas, and they have those linebackers who they can blitz. J.O.K., Jeremiah Owusu Koromoa, oh my gosh, that is a linebacker. That's a guy who was all around the football field in the run game. He was blitzing. He was in pass coverage. He had a big time tackle in pass coverage on Nico Collins. All of the things he was able to do, but Bobby Slowick every time. What we thought about the Cleveland Browns, and I think what we can still think, even in this game, it's a very good defense. We're looking at the Cleveland Browns and the Baltimore Ravens. Those are the top two upper echelon defenses in the NFL. And Bobby Slowick and CJ Stroud came out here, did it like it was nothing. Everything he was able to do, you had the touchdown play to Brevin Jordan after the Cleveland Browns score another touchdown. So this is a game where it's okay, it's 10 to 14 for Houston. Harrison Bryant comes down. He gets the big time catch at the end of the first quarter. They go down and score. Kareem Hunt scores again, makes it 14 to 10. Then Brevin Jordan. How do you score a touchdown on a play like that? Being that athletic, we know is a guy who always was an athletic tight end. He's never had the production to match some of those physical tools and traits like we see from a guy like that. But in this game, to have a 76-yard touchdown in a game where you needed every if you needed every yard, you needed that momentum. After the Cleveland Browns scored the football with Kareem Hunt, they went and did it. Now, I think even before that, C.J. Stroud, now this one, this was one that hurt because C.J. Stroud missed the touchdown down the football field to Nico Collins. Then they came back after that. This is where they made it 24 to 14. C.J. Stroud had the big time touchdown to Dalton Schultz. And I think the narrative coming out of this one is going to be pretty clear. Based on what we saw in this football game, it's going to be, oh, how do we let C.J. Stroud get to the number two overall pick? Oh, how do we possibly draft Bryce Young over a guy like this? Oh, a quarterback, a rookie quarterback, if he's so good, he's going to show you that he's good in his rookie year. He's going to show you that early. How do we let Bobby Slowick, a guy who's also off of the Kyle Shanahan coaching tree, go play with a defensive coordinator who also coached for Kyle Shanahan? How do we let those two guys match up? How is Bobby Slowick getting the best out of C.J. Stroud? How is C.J. Stroud running Bobby Slowick's offense to a T this early in his career? That's going to be the narrative, but I'm telling you, you cannot replicate what these guys are doing on the football field. What C.J. Stroud did in this football game shows you everything you need to know. I've already Already talked about how good he was, but I think to do it in the playoffs against a defense who, like I said, I think so highly of this puts him on another level. We can no longer babysit CJ Stroud. And I think a lot of people have already been off of that narrative. But looking at this, you're looking at a guy who's obviously top 10. How many quarterbacks can we say if you want to go through the next three to four or five years? Do you want to take over C.J. Stroud? It is truly becoming that conversation. How many guys home or away would have played like this against that Cleveland Browns defense? Now, like I said, injuries creeping up a little bit. The Cleveland Browns, no Grant Delpin. We saw them picking on Ronnie Hickman in the back end out of Ohio State. That was something they leaned on in the secondary. But even still with that, Denzel Ward, Martin Emerson, Greg Newsom, those guys were still getting attacked because Bobby Slowick and C.J. Stroud, if he's going to be that accurate, I mean, what coverage is perfect? for that like I said they tried to run man coverage in some situations that wasn't working Jim Schwartz he went to zone coverage that wasn't working as well I mean we talk about the ball that he had to John Mechie on the right side of the football field on the sideline how many quarterbacks can make that throw with the anticipation in a situation like that these are the types of things when I talk about CJ Stroud and CJ Stroud for everything he did in this game I think we look at it okay you had this team with the 24 to 14 lead as we went into the third quarter, but the defense for this one, the Houston Texans defense played amazing. Like I said, they put pressure on Joe Flacco. We saw what they did in the secondary, Steven Nelson, Derek Stingley Jr. He was lined up on Amari Cooper. And I also want to question, was Amari Cooper fully healthy in this one? Because after he caught that route across the middle on the first scoring drive by Cleveland, he limped off the football field and he came back, but they never really incorporated him into the offensive scheme in this game. Was Amari Cooper fully healthy? Because because we didn't see an Amari Cooper like we saw in the first matchup against this team. Now, also, that could be a credit to the Miko Ryans and what the secondary had in plan to stop a guy like that. We saw some extra safety help. We saw the linebackers helping underneath. But even still, this defense played their hats off. I just think I want to give those guys that credit because... You look at Blake Cashman, you look at De you look at Derek Stingley, since he's been back in the lineup, and I've kept talking about it, they've been taking away the football at an extremely high rate. Now, just to talk about what's next for this football team with how they play today, offensively, defensively, playing an extremely and a true complete game for the Houston Texans, what's ahead? 
how dangerous can this football team? We're going to drop more videos, additional videos talking about this specifically. But I think just at my first thought, I want to talk about this a little bit. There are some possible scenarios. They may either play Kansas City if they win. They're looking at possibly Baltimore, Buffalo, because the higher seeds, they have to play the lower seed. But you're also looking at a situation where the Houston Texans are the fourth seed. So they may not be the lower seed unless Kansas City wins. I think that we're looking at Buffalo. They're a heavy favorite going into this one. There's a lot of matchups possibly, but looking at how this team can be, if they can run the football, Devin Singletary, he had a big time 20 yard run that got called back by a holding by Shaq Mason. If they can run the football the way they ran it in this game, continue to pass the ball the way they passed it in this game, in the defense, I, I love what C.J. Stroud did. He deserves all of the credit he's going to get tonight and for the next couple of days on mainstream. But that deep, if they can play like this, and I want to emphasize it because I don't think enough people understand, that was the narrative in this game. That was the heavy hitter in this one. Kevin Stefanski came out shooting on all cylinders. But they made the big time plays. They stepped up when necessary. They put the pressure on Joe Flacco. Of course, he threw the two pick sixes. But before that, this was a guy who was flawless, making good reads, getting the football to Amari Cooper, getting the football to Harrison Bryant, David Bell having some big time catches. Shout out to Miko Ryans once again. Now, as we prepare to get out of here and wrap this thing up, I don't want to be a prisoner of moment guy. I think we can talk about how good the Houston Texans played today while still acknowledging there are some teams that can match up with them extremely well. But I want to say even adding to that, I'm not placing a ceiling on this Houston Texans team. I thought coming into this game, the way they were giving up the big play in the first half, the way that the Cleveland Browns were running the football in the first half, even some plays, I was like, okay, is this something that will stay consistent or will D'Amico Ryans adjust and get these linebackers flowing? Will they blitz against the run? Will they pressure Joe Flacco when they did those things? So the question becomes, if this defense can replicate that performance, if they can stop the run once again, if they can stop the pass once again, negating the first half with those big time plays, then Joku and Harrison Bryant. I'm starting to look at it like how good of a run and how big of a run can this Houston Texas team go on? I really want to know what you guys think about this one. That's going to do it for today's show. We're preparing to get out of here. We're about to watch the Miami Dolphins play the Kansas City Chiefs, another big time game. But I really, really want to know down below, what do you think about this game? What is the ceiling of this Houston Texans team? How far can they go? And just how excited? And how do you feel about watching a performance like this? First year head coach, first year offensive coordinator, rookie quarterback, everything. I mean, Will Anderson, potential defensive rookie of the year candidate, CJ Stroud, probably the offensive rookie of the year, if not Puka Nakua. All of these things are aligning and we're paying attention to it. Shout out to Houston, Texas once again. Great, great game on the day. Now, that's going to finally do it for today. And now, 